Cheers. <laughs> welcome, welcome, one and all, to Katie's Arms. It's um, two minutes to eight. And as regular joiners would know, um, hello, <laughs> Katie's Arms is where we spend half an hour once a week, usually out on Friday at eight o'clock live here, uh, which you know if you're already here. Uh, but we have half an hour where we forget everything. Hello, I'm early. I know, I'm so proud. Um, and we have half an hour where we laugh, essentially and mostly at me. Um, I in strongly encourage people to drink or do anything that makes themselves feel better. It takes any substances you want, be naked if you want, cover yourself in baby oil if it makes you happy. Essentially anything that makes you feel better. Um, and the pub started during the last lockdown or one of the lockdowns when I was like, balls to this! and we'll all just be here and, and laugh at the madness together. And we've kept it going because um, we decided that it would be a good thing to keep going. Also, I quite like it because it's kind of therapy for me. It's like being at the hairdressers without having to be at the hairdressers because I can just tell you stuff instead. And actually, I even thought about coming onto the Katie's Arms early this evening just so that I could hide from my own family. <laughs> I was just going to sit in here, shut the door, pretend to be doing an early's Katie's Arms so that no one could ask me for anything. In the last two minutes, I've been asked to find Under Armour for a football match tomorrow and asked why all the chocolate brownies gone. I don't, A, have an answer to those questions and B, I don't care. I don't care. And that's the thing as a mum, you're supposed to act like you care all the time or that you really mind or that you're concerned that something's lost or you're concerned that there's no chocolate brownie left. Whereas I'm not, I don't, I don't care at all, actually. <laughs> and it's, being a mum with teenagers is really like that. There's loads of times you just want to go, well, actually, I don't really care. <laughs> so, um, and whereas you're supposed to act concerned or sort of do something useful like help. I've got lots of things I want to show you uh, this evening. How's dementia dog? Oh my God. So the news update on the lions is neither of them have shat on the neighbour's lawn again. The fence is working in that regard and they haven't done anything hugely bad apart from just sort of bark at people. And oh yes, two of them together in tandem, they did a tandem shit on the village cricket pitch. And you're not allowed to even like walk on the village cricket pitch and you're certainly not allowed to, um, well you're certainly not allowed to shit on it. And both my dogs just legged it like crazy lions and then started doing these weird... So dogs do the circle thing before they shit, don't they? So both of them were way ahead of me and I'm now running to look like I care. Whereas really I don't. Although I do if it's on a cricket pitch. So I'm now running to act like I'm a responsible owner when I'm not. And both the dogs are circling like this on the local village cricket pitch where you're not allowed to walk or breathe ready to have a shit. So they're like doing a tandem shit and I'm only gonna be able to obviously deal with one at one time, but where I am, the locals are kind of, you know, kind of a little tense about the situation and so they're watching. So you have to do the, the act of being like super concerned owner now because I've got two dogs shitting. So you basically, you get loads of bags out all at once so that you, you're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, look at, look at all the bags I got, look, look. I'm absolutely clearing this all up. Meanwhile, in your head, you're thinking, I don't know where those shits are. I don't know how I'm going to find both of them. And why can't my dogs just shit in the, in the corners, in the edges, like a normal dog? But apart from the tandem shitting on the village cricket uh, pitch, and me having to clear that up, I don't think they've done anything too dastardly for at least a day. Although Tilda did try humping Stella. I've got them a new cage thing crate so that when we go somewhere soon, I can put them in it at night so they don't eat everything, all the furniture or each other. And I put them in their crate, which they love, by the way, this crate is bloody, the, the crate is basically the size of London Zoo. So they're in the London Zoo and um, Tilda was humping Stella's head. And I think that's a wee bit like, I feel like that's a bit rapey um, in the sense that if you're in your crate, I don't, I'm not big on safe spaces, obviously. Um, but when you're in a crate, I feel like that should be safe for you, if you're Stella. 
I feel like Tilda kind of banging away at her head in her crate. That might be upsetting. It's, it's hard to tell, because what can you tell with stupid dogs? You literally don't know. But um, anyway, that's what's going on with the labs. Here's an important thing I wanted to show you. Look at this. Oh, look. You'll know I'm obsessed by daffodils. But look at these. I mean, look. There's three of them. Huh? From my from my very own garden. I obviously had bugger all to do with it. This was the last owner's. Monty Don would be proud. Huh? Monty Don. I love him. I love him. I have secret ideas about Monty Don and his slacks in the garden. Um, look, aren't they amazing? Like daffodils, but with lots more doodly bits and no trumpet. Anyway, I love them dearly. So I plucked them, brought them in because they were all looking a bit sad. Um, and you'll know that I love daffodils because I compared my rhinor to a daffodil. But my, I can't even say that my bits look like this. These are far more glorious. Mine are not as complex as this. Anyway, I brought these specifically for you to see them because we all love daffodils and they're part of my mantra for how we cope with life. You just put these everywhere you are. Put them by your bed, put them where you go for a wee. Oh, an alarming thing, double headers. Is that, is that a rude thing or is that a daffodil thing? I'm unclear, it sounds rude, but also excellent and could also be a daffodil. An alarming development in my memory situation. And bear in mind this comes amongst the backdrop of stories in the press about various people and the difficult weeks they've had. And we just had the, who's the brilliant actor? You guys will help me. As, is it Asphasia? He's just retired from acting because he has asphasia, which means he's having difficulties. Um, I'm just double ender. Oh yes, I am thinking of a double ender. Yes, different to a double header. And that is the daffodil. Right, um, so it's, it's uh, an actor and he's just, is it Bruce Willis? I want to say it's Bruce Willis. Someone will help me. So he's just um, retired from acting because he has asphasia, which means he has trouble, Bruce Willis, thank you, articulating his words. And I'm sure he's able to think of them, but he's probably not able to articulate them as quickly as he would wish to. And therefore that's frustrating. And because of my long, 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 long history of epilepsy and proper, proper seizures, argh, proper seizures um, that used to dislocate my arms and things, um, double dislocate my arms and I used to bite through my tongue and things. Obviously my brain, not only is it damaged from life, it's damaged from surgery, but it's certainly damaged from years of kind of the boxing match I had with myself with my seizures. So at some point my brain and its damage will show itself. So I'm always on the lookout for it, you know. So when you do things like, uh, or when I do things like I go to put the kettle in the fridge, I'm like, is that is that my memory going? <laughs> like, is, th is this the start of my early onset? Is this me? So like hearing about Bruce Willis, I have all the sympathy there is because I know one of these things is coming to get me and it's coming this way towards me, right? And I'm just not gonna be like, I'm 95. It'll be the same as footballers or boxers or whatever. My brain has been mushed. So anyway, twice this week, I have sat down to have a wee without pulling down my pyjama bottoms. I'm saying, asphasia, thank you. Um, twice this week. So my question to you is, do you think that's the start of it? I've, I've sworn to my kids and everything that when I do lose my boop, boop, you know, and really start to go, that's it, the end is there. But that's a brave thing to say, because actually trying to kill yourself is kind of hard and difficult, and I'm not encouraging anyone to do that. But if I'm sitting down for a wee in my pyjamas and I'm not pulling my pyjamas down, is that the start of it? That's all I'm asking. And if Bruce Willis was here, I'd ask him. He's got issues verbally. Could it be that my asphasia is that I now am going to have to piss through my pyjamas? I don't know. But we know the end will come. And one day this brain is going to go. I mean, it wasn't magnificent before, but certainly it's going to go. So when those things happen to me, like the weird things, or the sitting down in your pyjamas to have a piss and then going, oh, why is it so comfy? And that's literally what I thought. I sat down and I was like, oh, that's warm. <laughs> and I hadn't weed, but I was like, that's real comfy. Which leads me to think maybe pyjama bottom covered toilet seats 
I'm thinking Primani. I'm thinking a brushed cotton. Oh. Maybe in the colour of an arse. Why has no one thought of this before? This is a genius. So you could have a toilet seat cover made from toweling or a brushed cotton. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, like you put on a steering wheel, the cover, or a fitted sheet. It would be a fitted toilet seat. But only in the female bathroom, so just in the bathroom. No one else would obviously be able to use that because everybody else has to piss all over it. Then you could wash it every day. And then when you sit down, it would be like, mm, like my pyjamas were. I really should think about pitching this. Thank you. New market. Listen in. <laughs> okay, but action. Oh, did, you, did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, because it would get dirty. Yes, but it wouldn't get dirty, would it? If it was the ladies using it, because we don't piss on seats. Exactly. So it would work. And because we do a wash typically every day, it'd be perfect. You just whip it off, quick wash through, dry it out in the airing cupboard. Boom. Airing cupboard, people. Who doesn't live, live with an airing cupboard? I can't live without an airing cupboard. Okay, let's move on. Let's have a drink. Everybody drink. This isn't me encouraging drinking. Uh. Hmm. I want to show you this. So we all know lovely Mark is lovely. Everybody wants to meet lovely Mark. Mark is very shy. He doesn't show his face and he doesn't, he's not public at all. And most people would never imagine we were married. I'm sure he never thought he would be either. So I bought Mark a pillow. You know, those pillows that are supposed to be like, oh, this is so comfortable because it's like built of concrete. Oh, that's so nice. So I saw one of those advertised on Instagram and I bought one. I've never bought anything from Instagram before because it would be like against my beliefs because I'm being targeted. So anyway, it's like, it's like you lie on it, but it's like not a pillow at all. It's like, uh, but it's supposed to be really great for you. Anyway, he quite likes it. But because I'm cheap as chav and bought a cheaper version, obviously off goes lovely Mark, who came from the rough end of Watford and everyone thinks I'm the posh one. And off he pops and he buys a, what are they called? Not tempura, like a prawn. Temper, tempura. Temper. He went and bought the expensive one. We're not made of money. So now we own a pillow that costs more than the frigging house, probably. Well, no, it wasn't that expensive, but you know, more than a fish and chips on the seafront, which is like my favorite thing. Temper. And guess what the pillow came with? This. This, my friends, is the instruction manual for a temper pillow. Ah. See this? Literally, can we meet lovely Mark? Oh, imagine that. <laughs> he would just be mortified. He would die. He'd just be like, hello. Look, look. This is the instruction manual for a pillow. How hard can it effing well be? Lie down, put your head on it. Like, I can't even, I mean, I don't even know what they, I just, who, Imagine being the person whose job it is to write the instruction manual for a pillow. See, if that was me, that would be the point where I would just go, no, sorry, I can't do this. And I'd, I'd have to probably rub, I don't know, put post-it notes on my nipples and be like, sorry, <laughs> I was meant for more than this. <laughs> because that's what, that's what this sort of, situation does to me when I'm pushed to a point like in Australia where I'm pushed to the point where it's so ridiculous I can't deal <laughs> then I do something really really self-sabotagingly ridiculous <laughs> to be like or I'd like get the temper pillow pop it up my shirt and be like I'm off on maternity leave <laughs> in the CEO's office sorry I've just realized I'm expecting quadruplets I've got to go home <laughs> and get fired but it would be worth it because I'd feel better, you know. Right, so that was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. This is exactly how my life is. Every single time I get to something and then I'm like, no, you're all too stupid. It happened with The Apprentice, happened in Australia, happened when I used to work at the Met Office. It happened every single time I just get to a point where... Everyone else is so retarded, I just can't do it. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, it's because she's so mean and nasty, she just can't do things. <laughs> no, it's because I literally can't cope with retards. 
Right. Now this I wanted to discuss with you. Hold on. I will, I will fish it up like an angler hooking in a large trout. I don't know. Do you angle a trout or do you fish for a trout? Hello, I miss you. Oh, how sweet. How sweet. I love my temper bed and pillow. I actually get a good night's sleep, not get up with a bad back. I am telling you. See, look, people like a temper a pillow. <laughs> Did you read the instruction manual? I fucking hope not. If you are on here and you read an instruction manual to a pillow, <laughs> I'm just not being funny, but if you could just piss off, uh, because you clearly don't have a personality. <laughs> right, now we're going to angle in. Yes, we'll discuss Chris Rock and William Schmidt. Um, and I've often wanted to twat someone on stage, particularly Phil Schofield, so I empathise in some regard. Right, we're just going to reel this in and see what we find, shall we? Mm -hmm. Like fishing a trout. Are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> Look, loathe temper, it's like locked out in bed. Here we go. Are you ready? <laughs> Here it is. This thing. And let me tell you, this thing can fuck right off. <laughs> you know what this is? Let me show you. It's a smart bastard meter. And this, I wonder if I, if I plug it in, will it do things? I don't know. In fact, I'm not going to because fuck them. This thing, I unplugged it the minute I found it in my house. It was put in when I wasn't here. I never gave permission. I never would have allowed that person through my front door. Nothing that links to someone else's network or tells someone else what I'm doing in my home. Nothing is getting plugged in in my house that is telling someone else what I'm doing. That's like having a camera fitted for some small penis little administrator to spy on my life. No. So this thing was in my house when I returned from one of my huge road trips. And obviously I unplugged it. Tomorrow I'm gonna to smash it with a hammer just to make myself feel better, just in one of those, you know. This, this can piss off. And I cannot tell you, have you? Yes, I've, I know how many times I've been badgered to get one of these, exactly. And I have found that too. I keep getting EDF things saying, you need a super upgrade, you need a super diddler, you need a free something. A, if someone tells you something for free, it never is. B, they're stitching you up. And C, I don't need to be spied on in my own home. Look, you see, it's even got this, still got the damn screeny protectory thing on. My view is, Katie, I want to see your daffodil. Darling, you don't. We've discussed this. It's terrible. It's, it's like a, bloody, you know, spaniel's ears, darling. Suffer people will suffocate down there. We have discussed this. Um, I'm going to encourage people, unless, I don't know what, look, let me see, what did, how did they get into my house? Well, I think we might want to ask Lovely Mark that, because Lovely Mark's so lovely, they'll have told him, oh, this is for your own benefit, la la la. And lovely Mark would have gone, oh, that's so kind, thanks. As opposed to me going, fuck off and take your meter with you and stick it up your ass. Uh, which I wouldn't do to someone who's working, obviously. Tell me, yes, smash that thing. If I smash it, does it affect anybody? Nobody has to pay for it other than me, right? I can just smash it, yes. I am the product, exactly. It's never free, you're the product, right. This, this fucking thing, I think this is a real worry because I know how much worry people are gonna be going through about their bills, right? There is old people right now who in one room with no heat on, because they can't afford it, because their money hasn't gone up and we know how much our bills are gonna go up, which I think is all by design. And these things, oh shit. Well, I mean, screw it actually. But these things, I have a, my worry is, you know how COVID, you know how COVID they kept bringing it into your life, right? Oh, oh my loves, look. Oh, my very, very expensive jewelry. It's not, it's cheap as chips, just fell off. Is that a sign? I don't know. Let's pop it here. My worry is, you know, right, so yeah, you know how they kept bringing COVID into your life, right? So they brought it in on the news and they brought it in with your children and they sent newsletters home. They sent letters to your door. They sent texts to your phone. They rang your house phone. They brought COVID into your life to make you worried and fearful and smaller and less, right? This brings 
all the worries into your kitchen. And as, so for example, your wife, your daughter, your kid, your whatever is doing something, like having a shower, you are watching that and the stress in you is building. And that's the opposite of everything I think in life, in terms of, I'm not saying you have to avoid a problem, although sometimes you do need to put problems on a shelf in order to breathe. But what you don't need is this. You don't need the, my wife's going mad in the next room. She just got her gas electric direct debit regimen. This is something we need to spend time on probably more seriously outside of Katie's arms. But we're going to have to find ways to cope with this because everybody isn't going to be able to afford their energy bills. I truthfully don't believe having one of these in your home. Obviously, oh, are we soundless again? Oh, 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 oh. I'm just seeing if we're sound. Um, uh, if we haven't got sound, I apologise. I think sometimes <laughs> Instagram does this to us. Um, I'm, I'm just not sure that these are the right thing. I think they're perpetuating the worry. Right, let's just throw that away. Boom, that's gone. Um, now, uh, Chris uh, Rock, I was about to say Chris Smith and Will Rock. <laughs> so maybe that's my memory again. <gasps> Chris Rock and Will Smith. Do I think Will Smith is a bit of a knob? Yeah. Do I think Chris Rock is probably a bit of a knob? Yeah. Do I think everybody at the Oscars is probably a complete twat? Yes. Do I think Will Smith was probably a little bit high on something and overexcited about the fact he was going to win the Oscar? Yeah. But can you go up and slap someone in the face? So it's a divided household here. My daughter thought it was kind of like manly. But I mean, she works on a farm and is a milkmaid and is like all into the kind of big guys. So she thought it was manly because he was defending his wife, boo boo boo, which I would get if we were in a pub and it was like, right, come outside, boosh, boosh, boosh. But this isn't, this is the Oscars. And secondly, who goes up and does a little, <laughs> right? You know, if someone's going to twat someone in my defence, I'm not looking for a little slap. I'm not sure, I'm not saying he should have gone for real theatre, like real smacked in one. But if someone's ever going to come and defend me, I want, I want, I want to see the full, <laughs> I want to see round one and a knockout. I don't want a ah, girly slap with a big arm. Um, I think uh, Chris Rock is annoying. I think all of them are. I don't find them funny. I don't think their comedy is funny. I think if I was given the Oscars to do, Clearly, we'd all have a smashing time. I'd be up there talking about my <laughs> smart meter. Be up there at the Oscars talking about my daffs. Imagine. I th honestly, I can't. How would that not draw a crowd? I also think his wife is a pain in the ass. actually. She looks like a complete twat. So what she called Jada Pinkety Winkety. You know, I just look at her and I think, Meh, I wouldn't bother. I think she's had an affair or two, hasn't she? Which is totally fine. It's not my business. But, um, you know, I don't think Jada Pinkety Winkety is all that, is she? She's got a shaved head. She still looks cute. Like, if I was her, I'd be like, yay. Yeah, it's not many people that can pull off a shaved head, and she super can. Not only that, she can pull off a shaved head in a high roll neck. You know how that was all the fashion, wasn't it, for all of the dresses? And that neckline is literally the ugliest neckline you can ever have, I think, particularly in a, you know, evening wear. If I wore that neckline, not only would some of this extra chins, like it would come over and it would sit like that on top of the roll neck, but then I would just look like this sort of <coughs> terror hawk. What's that thing that people say I look like? Like a terror, terror, whatever that bird is that's like got the beak. So it would be like an extra chin and then the nose. So what I'm trying to say here is, no one can pull off a roll neck well. She's got a roll neck and a bald head because she's that pretty. So she can talk about having alopecia all she wants, which always reminds me of alpaca. <laughs> then I get distracted by the idea that I really like alpacas because <laughs> they're ugly and furry and their legs are really fat. Because I don't know if you've ever seen alpacas, but they have like, um, they have loads and loads of wool on their legs. So they look, you know, fat women that just have the legs that go, they literally, their legs just go all the way to until it ends in like a weird foot. <laughs> not like a, 
not like a cankle, but just like more like the whole leg is sausage, isn't it? When you're just like super chubby and like you're carrying water or whatever. So like real fat women have alpaca legs. <laughs> and it makes me laugh because they always look really, really painful. And then they always wear slip on shoes because it's so painful. <laughs> anyway, if Jada Pinkety Winkety has got alpaca, then um, that's a shame, but she's still really hot. She looks great in her high roll neck and her life is pretty much sorted, right? And if she wanted to, she could go and get one of those awesome wigs that you can buy. And I'm not being dismissive here because I've, you know, I had my whole head <laughs> chopped open with a circular saw <laughs> and had 124 staples, wasn't it, from ear to ear <laughs> when they split open my head and <laughs> got into my brain. Um, so what I mean is I kind of get the not having hair thing for other reasons and she still looks really fine and fantastic. And I think other people have it much harder. So if you want, you know, people always want to create a drama, don't they? I think probably Will Smith should have his Oscar taken. He can muck off. Jada Pinkety Winkety, she can muck off. And they could both try having some real problems in their lives. <laughs> like people in the UK who don't know how they're going to pay for their own gas or electricity this year. That's what I think. I also thought it just, I just think we've got to a point where we just don't give a shit about those people. And increasingly, we don't give a shit about the very, very, very rich who have no idea about our lives. And it's funny because everyone thinks I'm the snob and I'm all about everybody doing better and it doesn't matter about the little people, blah, blah, blah. I'm the little people myself. But like you hear about Rishi Sunak fucking off to California today on a holiday with his multi-billionaire wife. And you really do say to yourself, they really don't, not only do they not guess it, they really, really don't even give a shit at all. And I guess that's, it just, it's just, that's a horrible, I mean, that's always been true, but the idea that they don't, they'll never know what it feels like to be working, two of you working, and to wonder if you can afford to do X or Y, or how you can't do the holiday this year because you need to try and pay your energy bill. Or they just get in a plane and they fuck off to California, and it's too much, isn't it? So I suppose that's where I net out, is that, in a way, I don't have the energy massively to care about Will Smith or Chris Rock, because fuck them all. And fuck Jada Pinkety Winkety and her, her bloody alpaca as well. Because some really great people I know in this country have got things a lot friggin' harder than that. And, uh, and I want to give my energies in those places. And I think that's sometimes how we look after ourselves, is we um, try and not give people our energy that don't deserve it, but definitely give a lot of our energy to good things that do deserve it, right? <laughs> so Lovely and I, Mark and I went out for lunch today and it's our second time we've been for lunch in a week because I'm going away soon and also why not? And also we escape our house and teenage kids and it's a moment where we chat and do things. And my daughter said to me, why are you and dad going out for lunch so much? We've literally been twice in like 10 days. It's not, I'm not saying we're like out, 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 and we're just going to the pub for a bowl of chips. So she said, um, she said why are you and dad are always out together? What, it's weird. What are you, it's weird. And then as I'm just about to leave, she said, but this is Poppy. She said, mum, you're not going to prison, are you? Not a word of a lie. And I was, like, I was like, no. She goes, that isn't the reason you and Dad are going out a lot now, is it? Because you're going to prison. <laughs> I was like, no. But what I like about that is the idea that one of the very reasonable reasons that I might be going out for lunch with lovely Mark more than, you know, like I'm normally on the road for three months, but like the reason me and Dad may have sat together in the same room <laughs> is that maybe I'm now going to prison. <laughs> and that's a totally believable thing in this house. Like everyone would be like... Oh, yeah, that's just mum. She's just fucking off to prison because she said something she shouldn't have. <laughs> Never mind. That's why she's having pub lunch with dad. Yeah, because she's going away. <laughs> she's going to be in the slammer for the next six months. Yeah, that's my mum. <laughs> that's literally our life. <sighs> right. My darlings, can you believe it? You, we have two. Do I know Douglas Murray? I knew Douglas Murray before Douglas Murray got hot. <laughs> I knew Douglas Murray when he was just a cutesy boy before he became like. Mm. 
<laughs> gay pin-up porn beefcake, which he's become. He's hotter than hell and he's become very fabulous in America. But uh, he, he, someone got a hold of him, an image made over Douglas Murray. He manages to tread a brilliantly fine line by saying stuff you can't say, but still saying it because he's kind of mm, a hottie pin-up, sort of gay porn mm, on Fox News. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Um, why aren't I on GB News? Um, because although so many people think it's like this open platform and like people can be on there and say what they think and Neil Oliver can do that and Farage can do that, they won't have me anywhere near it. Um, I haven't asked, but of course it's not like they don't know I'm here. And there's a kind of agreement at a very, very senior level uh, between uh, the big names, Murdoch, the Rothmeyers, uh, Fox News, the rest that I can't be allowed to go on. I don't know if it's an actual D notice against me, which would mean I can't be on anything, but certainly they would never invite me on um, because I've been obliterated by powers that are more powerful than just production companies or TV companies. Um, when I was obliterated from Daily Mail, the coalition of dark forces that descended to have me removed included like the head of the uh, Jewish synagogues, the chief rabbi, uh, the head of the Catholic churches, Brendan Cox and all of that lot were involved, um, Labour Party were involved. It was a really weird coalition of darkness and that still sits over me. Um, so that's why I can't be on something like GB News because it wouldn't be approved of by the actual controllers of the country, um, which is why this is a joy and why when we make it to the stage, in Blackpool in May, which is coming around the corner, um, it will be an epic moment because there will be a real sense for me and probably for the audience that um, the ordinary little people, I mean me, us, overcame a coalition of the most powerful churches, religions, charities and political bodies. There are. <laughs> And then we'll see the darkness fall. Then when Poppy says to me, Mum, you going to prison? It will be like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I spoke on Blackpool Pier. Now I must do my time. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you all. You're so sweet. Look, you are the light. They are the dark. I know. And um, I know I, I know I'm always true to myself. And I know I'm not a bad person. And I know I'd do anything for anyone. And that's always been the thing that eventually got me through, even in the dark time. So, look, my loves, I will leave you to your evenings. Um, consider ripping out your energy meter and throwing it into, I don't know, maybe a neighbours that you don't love. Or maybe dangle them like, dangle them like ornaments from a tree. I don't know. Drown it. Do something punitive to it. Maybe I can encourage punitive actions on energy meters. And it can be the most amusing way that you kill your energy meter. In fact, that's two things we've come up with, this Katie's Arms. Toilet seats in the style of a flannelette. We've come up with alpaca legs. And we've come up with, most ingenious way, this could be a TikTok sensation. Okay, my darlings, I'm not even gonna read that, that's too rude. <laughs> but it makes me laugh. Uh, we need Katie for London Mayor, get rid of the midget, I know. And he is, I think I've told you this, I crossed the road to shout at him. <laughs> and perspective did that weird thing. Because when I was across the road from him and spotted him, he actually looked like he might be of a reasonable size. I crossed the road, the perspective disappeared, and it turns out he's this high. So Sadiq Khan, on me, is nipple height. So what am I, five foot eight? Sadiq Khan is this high. I know there's a sort of thing about stunted birth. <laughs> Mentioning no names. But he's so short. So it was really disappointing because when I started shouting, I had to almost crouch down in the manner of a mother shouting at a child. Like, Sadiq, go on! You've let down the people of this country. You do not speak for this country. You do not speak for the ordinary people of Britain. You are a disgrace. And you favour your communities over mine. And you do not deserve to be in this position. And you're in... And I was literally... Damn, like I was talking to a 12-year-old. <laughs> it's really, really disappointing. And that's when it's really good to be tall. <laughs> right. Knobhead. Well, precisely. Um, okay, my loves. I will love you and leave you. Um, what are we? Friday. Where are we going to be next week? Oh, <gasps> Wait. Are we going 
surfing next week or am I still here? I don't know the answer to this question and you don't need to stand while I find out. Um, I'll find out later. The foofinator is back. Leave my foof out of this, <gasps> said the nun to the bishop. Um, and I will see you all next week or some other time. And um, yes, try and try and take time not to worry. Because worrying all the time isn't going to solve the problem. And I don't know how I'm going to solve the problem yet. But I know we won't solve it by worrying. So maybe just have the night off. Maybe just say to yourself, fuck it, I'm not going to worry tonight. I'm just going to have a couple of drinks, relax, enjoy the fact that I'm alive. We can all lose our shit tomorrow, my darlings. But for tonight, give yourself a night off. Go and eat chocolate, cover yourself in baby oil, rub yourself down in the neighbour's conservatory windows. Sort of thing I do and get arrested. Okay, bye-bye.